everyone, today we're going to be looking at Althusser, at what makes a subject, subject position, and at the material practices, as well as talking about real and imagined. I'm going to first going to start by describing what the subject is. Now, Althusser said that the subject is you, is a person, and they become the subject of a particular ideology. They are a subject position, so they have a position as a subject, so that could be the mother, the father, the daughter, the student, the teacher, the nurse, the graduate, whatever it is that they are in society is your subject position. You can have multiple, of course, but we do things that reinforce this subject position. So I'm a student, that's my subject position, so I study. And for example, like a, a mother, her subject position is a mother, they might take care of their children. Now, even if they don't take care of their children, they're still a mother because they have the act of leaving their children or not taking care of their children because that is their subject position. So Althusser believed that to become a subject you first had to be hailed and he likened this to someone walking along the street and then someone being like, hi, you there, and you being like, me? And that's your hailing on that and that's how you become a subject of the ideology. Now it's not like that, obviously, ideology doesn't tap you on the shoulder and say, hey, want to join? And you're like, sure. You recognise yourself as a subject position in this ideology. So you recognise yourself, you're like, oh, I am a girl. You recognise yourself in that ideology. And this is kind of like when you know you see the ads that are like, hey, do you want to miss, do you don't want to miss out on this sale? Yes, you. It's not really you, right? It's talking to everyone is actually talking to a camera. Like right now I'm talking to you, but I'm talking to a camera. So we recognize it as talking to ourselves. So the person on the CV might be like, you, and you're like, oh, what, me? And it's not actually you, of course, but that's why we call it a misrecognition. So Althusser called it, you recognize that it's you, that someone's talking to you, but it's actually a misrecognition because they're talking to people in general. They're talking to everyone, so that's why it's a misrecognition, because you recognise you, but it's not really you, it's everyone. So just because an ideology hails you doesn't necessarily mean, or, or calls out to you, doesn't necessarily mean you're influenced by it. So for example, Althusser said that you are basically held at, at different points. A lot of people, there's a lot of debate about that. Some people believe that it's a certain um, step in psychology as you begin to develop um, self-awareness as a child. Others believe it can come at different points. There's a lot of debate about exactly when that is. Some people even think that you are subjected before you're even born because it pre-exists you, the ideology pre-exists you. For example, you're already being interpolated when you're born and someone's like, it's a girl or it's a boy. It's The discourse is already set for you, even before you're born. Um, so Althusser looks at the material practices, the everyday life and the material environment that we are born into. So for example when we are born a girl, there are material practices that reinforce that. You know, there is the, the clothes, the everything that society has, has stipulated that this is what a girl should do. That's what happens to you, not necessarily what you choose. Now just because you're influenced by ideologies doesn't mean you're influenced by all ideologies just because they hail you or they might speak to you. For example, if you have lived your life quite a, as a not racist person, for example, and someone says something racist, you don't automatically become racist just because of that. You have the capability to reject some ideologies but others are just as familiar to you and you can't recognise them and they feel like common sense, really. I mean, the practice of shaking hands is an example in itself of an ideology because we've been taught that that's the right thing to do and it doesn't seem strange, we don't question it. As soon as we meet someone we shake their hands. It's not something that we really question or critique. And Altus has said that once you get out of that ideology, you can't truly escape it but you can critique it and that's what a lot of people do and and that's why a lot of people um, critique ideology because while they might not be escaping it completely they can critique it. This begs the question how much agency do you actually have in your own life to for exercise some form of, of free will and power over your own life? 
Alta said didn't agree that the super superstructure was determined by the economic base. Um, he believed that ideology is not determined by the economic base in the first instance, that's what Marx said, but instead in the last instance. So it's a process of interaction and the base and the superstructure can affect each other. It might be tied to each other, but they might but the superstructure might not necessarily reflect the economic base. It might challenge it or escape it. And so in the Althusserian model, we have more agency. Humans have more agency. We can examine ourselves and our situation. We can't necessarily escape it entirely, but we do have some agency to change and to critique. Now I'm just going to do one last thing, which is deconstruct one last sentence from Althusser. We did one sentence last video, um, and I'm just going to do one more for this one. So in his sentence in Lenin and Philosophy and Other Essays from 1971, page 155, he says, What is represented in ideology is not the system of the real relations which govern the existence of individuals, but the imaginary relation of those individuals to the real relations in which they live. This kind of sounds like a real imaginary real what, that doesn't really make a lot of sense. But I'll break it down. So the imaginary construction, for example, that's Australia is the land of the fair go. That's what we believe, what we'd like to think, what ideology has told us. Not necessarily the truth. I'm not saying that it's not the truth, but it's not necessarily. And the real relations are, yeah, the, the truth, what actually happens in real life. It might not be exactly what we imagined, but it's still very believed and a lot of people will defend it to the last instance. A lot of people will defend Australia as being, yeah, all fair if anyone else critiques it, even though that might necessar not necessarily be the case. It is still real within that imaginary construction because it relates to how we might see something that is imaginary, but it affects how we relate to the real world. So it really affects the way people live their, li live their lives in relation to the world. But it is imaginary since it discover discourages a full understanding of, of the conditions which govern our existence. So it still is imaginary, but it affects us, which is why it's real. But in the end, it's still imaginary and it's not the real thing but it does affect on how we approach our lives and how we look at the world. So what was represented in ideology is not the system of real relations that govern the, the existence of into individuals, it's not the real thing, but it's the imaginary relation of those individuals to the real relations in which they live. So I hope that makes sense. Um, once again, give me any feedback that you can recommend. I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, and yeah, just please give me your feedback and um, yeah, I think I won't be doing a lot more Althusser videos. I think I'll move on to maybe some Judith Butler um, or I'll continue with my literary time periods video. My next one will think will be gothic literature. But if there are any requests, then I'm happy to do that. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a great day and or evening slash night. <laughs> Bye.